Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to look at a comet, an exoplanet at the nearest star system, a note about a solar health paper from a few months ago, and a paleomagnetic study from just after the last disaster cycle event 6,000 years ago. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find another very quiet day. We still do expect a Riger cycle uptick next month, but in the interim, it has been very quiet. No solar flaring. Sunspot situation getting thin. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, so let's take a peek at those sunspots. Here's why flaring and eruptive activity are low. Bigger sunspots have turned out of view and the remainder are small and in decay. Flaring is expected to remain relatively low today. The coronal hole is directly facing Earth and will be all day. Alphine waves interacting with Earth today and tomorrow, and its solar wind is expected to arrive at Earth on Sunday, maybe even Monday. We'll be watching, but it is expected to be a minor space weather event. So let's go next to the comet. This is a speck of Pons Brooks. It's a Halley-type comet, and they found the isotope signature of its water identical to the Earth's. This has astronomers pointing at the panspermia hypothesis of exogenous sources of material kick-starting life on Earth. Meanwhile, astronomers think they've spotted a planet orbiting Alpha Centauri. We know of planets orbiting Proxima Centauri, but Alpha has been elusive with high brightness of the binary obscuring the planet's zone. They think they just spotted it more solidly than ever before. Folks, this study is making headlines this week, and I don't really know why. It's great science, solar activity impacting blood pressure, yep, 100%. But the paper is from April 28th. It was in our May 4th morning show, and again, happy it's getting around the knowledge circle, but wondering what took so long and wondering how it feels as an audience to be months ahead of everyone else. Last but not least, folks, Earth's magnetic field did not stop shifting around entirely in the aftermath of the event 6,000 years ago, the Qianqi excursion, the NOAA event. They noted strong shifting of magnetic north up to 5,000 years ago, and they also have an increasing field power condition seen here as brighter colors as time progresses. That's coming off the weak point 6,000 years ago when the last disaster occurred. Folks, the next issue of Observer Review comes out today. Our e-magazine is the only publication actively following the sun, weather, earthquakes, and the magnetic pole shift on a monthly basis. This month, we hit the deadly nature of magnetic pole shifts along with many other solar forcing and space weather topics. Link to join the Observer Review, the e-magazine, is below and you'll get access to every issue ever when you sign up. It's about two to three books worth of material for less than a combo meal at a fast food restaurant. Folks, we've got a pole shift conference coming later this month, one in September too, along with Dr. Dunning coming to Founders Weekend. If anyone is around this weekend, we are doing our Dog Days of Summer event, Family Fun, on Saturday. I will be out there and it'll be a good time. More is coming in October and November as well, including our second Observer Speed Dating and Connections event. The first one was pretty mind-blowing several connections made and whether you just want to meet other observers or you're looking to find your prepper princess or post-apocalyptic warlord it turns out observer ranch was a major spark of light the first time around november 7th and 8th that's round two find a time to come see us and book your stay at observerranch.com link to get the e-magazine is below and we greatly appreciate your support we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.